is for the girls. Y'all can love somebody, but in the words of Alina Baraz, don't mean they are the one. Hey guys, welcome back to How's He Life. In a recent episode, we had answered a lot of your guys' questions. Just some random questions that you threw at us. The reason why he has a beard is because I freaking love it. Oh, this is a funny one. Do Adam have fun? I have way more fun than she does. I'm a good time. I'm gonna put I that hashtag that. for Tamara. I'm a good time. <laughs> I am a good time. There were a couple of themes that came out, including Relationships. A lot of relationship advice questions, so we figure, what the heck, let's let's try to answer them. We are not experts by any it stretch means. of imagination, <laughs> but hey, if we can help one person like people have helped us, then so be it. So the first one comes from? Sexy Cool JC. We both have strong individualities? I didn't realize that. I thought he was the only one of with course. a strong individual personality. She is such a pushover. I'm just kidding. Being strong-willed is not a bad thing. To me, it means that you are passionate. And that's what helps Adam and I whenever we feel strongly about something. The first thing we have to, well, we have to like calm down and realize that it's not us against each other. It's us against the problem. We are jo just both very passionate human beings mm -hmm. that are passionate about maybe different things. What about me? And Aiden as well. We've learned to respect that and then focus on the issue at hand. I'm just waiting. Patience. patience. Strong individuality means patience. You know, you're going to always have disagreements. The good thing is I want her and she wants me to have an opinion. It's about respecting that opinion. And realizing me. what we want out of yeah. that conversation. We're on the same team. Because we're on the same team. And if we really think about the common denominator of a situation, even when we may have different points of views, mm -hmm. that's respect. Yep. If you watched our episode on how we met, we mentioned emails. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He said, I normally don't do this. And True. that's what really kind of just like melted my heart because you were being honest yeah. up front. I never have done it before or since. Yes. Well, I would hope not. <laughs> One of the things that Adam noticed about me that I absolutely loved because we were both co individually confident people. He said, I love your sassiness. And I was like, Oh, that's dope. If I only because... knew. If I only knew. <laughs> but the reality is, is that is a part of who I am. Yep. I was that way when we first met at 26 and at something age. I am still the same. Gentlemen and don't tell. he doesn't he he doesn't push that down. He actually um, accepts it and he likes it. gosh this is where Adam and I are so different and that give and take comes into play my perfect weekend would just be sitting at home staying in some sweats watching TV hanging with the kids cooking breakfast cooking lunch cooking dinner having a glass of wine I think I said that before and just chillaxing that is chilling and relaxing together not Adam. <laughs> My perfect weekend depends on the weather. If it's raining and cold and ugly outside, guess what? Hanging out, chillaxing, which isn't it, always... It ah, never ah, rains ah, in ah. Southern California. We're in Southern California right now. I know, but I've experienced I want to finish that. my point. Okay, go ahead. See? Patience. to my thought process. Okay, so I have two perfect weekends. If it's ugly outside and cold, hanging out at home, doing exactly what she says. But if it's warm outside, I don't mind actually hanging outside if it's warm too, I'm hanging at home, but I wanna be outside, I wanna be in the pool, I wanna be in the sun, I wanna to listen to music, I wanna maybe do a project or something. Um, but I also like to go see and do. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> not all the time, not all the time. No, that's a good I like to, you know, get just go for a, even just go for like a Sunday drive with the kids. I remember when I was little, I used to go for a Sunday drive with my parents and my grandparents, 
and they would go look at property or whatever, just go for a drive. I remember some of the coolest moments were sitting in that car and hearing them talk. Mm -hmm. And I remember, remember I, there was times I wanted to be in their memories. Like I wanted to be like, oh, I wish I was, wish I was born then when they were doing that. So I, those things are really cool. So I, it's kind of a mix. So I do actually agree with you on some things on the chillaxing weekends, especially when it's cold and rainy. But I also like to go do and see as well. I like to go out, I want to experience things. Exclusive fun fact for the Housley life. I had to drink coffee like every day just to keep up with this one. She he was has, sick a lot. He would. You did. You slept a lot. I was like, you're going to Albert Einstein. You'd sleep your life away. He said it's very healthy to get naps. Naps are and one now, thing. And Sleeping 21 hours a day I is another. Not to sleep 21 <laughs> hours. I think the longest nap I ever had is like two and a half, three hours. Oh, crap. Babe, I have never oh slept longer gosh. than that. That is not nap. true. I wish your family was here. No, they know. They, they take naps. Your nap. naps were like three hours. I did I not just say two and a half, No, you just hours. had two to two and a half. You, three I hour did. Naps I said two time. and a half. To three hours. I said that is the longest nap. Obviously, that's not a nap. Kids. That's a sleep. <laughs> no, it is not. That's a coma. I love naps so much. Like I get excited. A... Like I like folding my bed, fluffing my pillow, huh, and I always say I have a date with my pillow. I don't mind a nap. I did. I used but to. But now you take naps. I do. But mine are like like 25, 30 minutes. Done. Perfect. 45 That's a cat nap. No, cat naps are like five minutes. The, what do you think? Tell us in the comments. Five What's minutes a good is not time even for a nap. A nap? It What's takes me good? like five minutes to take a I nap. Wouldn't, I didn't say five minutes. For, I said five minutes or cat nap. Ten minutes. I'm, I'm 35, 40 minutes. You can guys tell us in the comments. I know you're going to agree with her. That is a power 35, nap. 35, 40 minutes are perfect. Can I just define my naps? Because Three I hours. love naps. Three hours. Cat nap is like the short short naps power naps is like a nap that kind of gives you energy to get through the she day that's like 20 30. <laughs> <laughs> ain't no shame in my game that's why i still look young <laughs> and <laughs> like a really good nap like a nap nap is two hours there are moments where adam and i in the midst of those, you know, highs or, or even the low moments where we look at each other and we say, you know what, I ain't going anywhere. You going somewhere, I ain't going anywhere. So we got to figure this out. And, oh, oh right, hi, right, hi, right, hi, right, hi. Right. Oh, oh, she's looking for, right, right. she's looking for Aiden. Aiden, do you want to go? Do you want to go, do you want to hey, go right, say right, hi to your sister? All right, all right, come sit here. Araya, Araya, come here and sit with mommy and daddy. We're talking about relationships. Speaking of a strong willed individual, there she went. There she goes. And here she comes again. Araya, hey. Aiden, what's up, Dada? Let's switch. We're doing a switcheroo. Araya, see that strong willed personality? Araya knows what she wants. Okay, I'd rather be in a relationship where the other partner is free to be honest with their emotions and feelings instead of someone always, always just being a pushover, letting someone always get their way. Because eventually, I feel like they're gonna regret that and it's gonna come out in, in different ways. Adam and I actually have check-ins. I know it may sound weird, but it actually works. We've been married this year, it'll be for nine years. And I think it's very important to just see how your spouse is doing. Sometimes you could be so focused on your career, the kids that you, you forget, or ha, this is a big one. People are so focused on their own happiness in their relationship mm -hmm. that they actually forget, yo, you have another partner here. How are they feeling? So there have been times where I've asked Adam, hey, are you happy? And he'll be like, yeah. I'm like, Adam, are you happy with everything? Is there something that we could do a little bit differently about our relationship? And he's like, yeah, for the most part, I am happy, but, and then we would have the same scenario 
vice versa. And I feel like that has really, really helped us. Well, you know the old book from back in the 90s, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, or vice versa, whatever the title you is. You guys are from Mars. Think aliens. Oh, my favorite one is... Lord. Venus has the pretty rings. No, that's Saturn. Oh, Saturn. Never mind. <laughs> it's like the old picture someone sent me of a cockpit. You know, uh, men is like a regular, regular old, you know, car that's uh, automatic where it's just drive, True. neutral, reverse, and park. And women are the inside of a fighter jet, where you're like, oh my gosh, all these dials. Inside of a plane. So we're yeah. different. We're different, and that's okay. I mean, the key is being able to communicate with your spouse. So, for example, again, we're not relationship experts, but if I have an issue, usually I'm not. I'm the person that will say something to Tamara, like, hey, when you were on the reel, you said this the other day. I do not wear socks with my Birkenstocks. I don't even have Birkenstocks. And then she was like, oh, maybe, maybe it was your dad. So the point is that you know, if something that bothers you, it's okay to say something about it. And but the key is the other one being able to take it. And remember, I keep saying this, we're on the same team. So I say something to her, she has to realize I'm not attacking her. I'm on her team. That's just my, 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 my concern or maybe my problem that I have or whatever the issue is, vice versa. If she wants to come to me and say, you know what, when you did this, I gotta be able to be, understand that she's not doing that to attack me because we're on the same team. It's a, it's a hard concept to grab, but it can be grabbed. And, and it's good. And it's really good for relationships and for friendships too, not just relationships. Yeah. So there's two ways to do this. Actually, there's three ways to do this with date night. Um, every once in a while, babysitter will cancel. And so guess what? We find a way to take the kids with us. The second way was we had someone that only, one time we only had an hour on a Friday. We literally had an hour. And I was like, we have an hour. What do you want to do? And I'm like, we're going to go here. And there's a place down the street, happened to be a brewery, actually. We went down there and we had a little sampler together just by ourselves for an hour. And that, that hour connecting was awesome. And that's and then, the key. And Sorry. then, and then the, the, the third one, obviously, is to find a babysitter, to find like someone in the neighborhood Make the effort to find, you can find somebody. Adam said the key word. I'm learning not to jump in when Adam talks as well. My sister and I have been doing that for years. Never. But anyways, Adam said the key word. It's connect, connection. I agree with a lot of the stuff he said. Now we don't know your full situation. Maybe you don't have anyone to watch the kids. So I would say the main thing is find something that you can do, even with the kids around in your house, to connect. Sometimes, and we've actually done this once before, if you Locked have- Locked in my closet. No. Okay. If you have games, um, iPhones, or you know, a television, put something on just for 30 minutes or an hour in another room, you and your spouse can watch something in your room, Netflix, chill, have a little quickie, um, drink some wine, and you, I mean, it does wonders. It still works. Or, it's an or here's night. another one, here's another one, cook together. Just cooking together with that glass of wine, and like I, like I say, make sure stuff. you connect when you're doing it and just give the kids an activity that they can do on the side, I'm telling you, just the idea of you guys trying to do it and seeing that your husband or you want to do something like that, mm -hmm. that could be enough too. So that is not an easy answer, but I'll tell you this, you have to like that person. It's literally that simple. So it doesn't matter, like for example, that Tamara's an actress and I was a news guy, or you know, we both believe in God, but she went to this church and I went to that church. I mean, it comes down to, is this someone that you wanna be with, you wanna hang with? Is this person your best friend? Mm -hmm. It's that simple. If it is, if that person is your best friend, then it's worth fighting for, it's worth figuring it out, it's worth tackling those problems together. If that person isn't your best friend, or there's some serious issues in the sense of, well, we don't, agree on some major issues, then, then it's not worth saving. And in fact, it's better to have those conversations now. We had those conversations before we got married. I mean, we were together for five and a half years before we got married. Yeah. We broke up for a while too. And we had to go through some of those things. There were, there weren't anything, looking back, it was really nothing major. It was like outside influences, but there were still things we had to talk about. Do we want to have kids? You know, I had a friend that just, their relationship broke up because they decided that after, you know, five years, he wanted to have kids and she didn't. Um, you know, those things need to be talked about before while, you know, even while the bliss is still going, find out. 
because sometimes when you're in the blissful moments, they can cause illusions. You're not getting the truth of that person mm -hmm. and your relationship. And if you are looking to get married, oh baby, <laughs> the truth That'll make it will easier. come out. If you're constantly trying to fight and like figure things out all the time, it's probably not meant to be if you feel like you're always, always swimming upstream. So what I say, so simple. If you are crying more than you're laughing, ah, <laughs> ain't it? And there's one more. I think of a cup, right? My mom actually told me this. In a relationship, there's always give and take, right? He should be filling your cup and then there are times, oh my gosh, he annoys you, the water goes out. But the thing is, is you should always be filling that cup. Yes, life isn't perfect, the water goes out, but fill that cup, water goes out. If that water is always going out, and, you, and you're always empty, You're gonna be sweetie, thirsty. Yes, you're gonna be thirsty, and it's not meant to be. I have to say my favorite part of our wedding, I love to sing, and Adam had hired a band, and I got to sing along with the band. That was freaking awesome. And I got to sing our song, which is Don't Stop Believing" by Journey. And I got to sing our song, our second part of the song, which is Go Back to Cali by Uncle Jay, <laughs> which is perfect. My favorite part of our wedding was seeing her when I turned the corner and looking down that aisle with the flower petals and seeing all of our friends and family from all over the world and seeing her at the end with our pastor and our families and it just, and she looked gorgeous. Aww. And I still think of that view and think, wow. I remember thinking, holy smokes. Aww. I was nervous. But, um, so what do you guys think? I mean, that'd be fun to kind of maybe, our anniversary's coming up, nine years. We've been together 15, but nine years for yeah. our wedding anniversary. Maybe we should do a, an episode about, we, maybe we talk about our wedding for one of these. That'll be really cool if we can kind of We can um, use our photos again. Yes. <laughs> we spent so much I think it's balance, whether it be your job or what you want to do in life or maybe something you really invested in. Um, we It's all about being you know, on the same team. So if Tamara comes to me and says, you know, I really like, for example, the real. Tamara's like, I don't know if I should do this. And I said, you know what? I think, I think it's for some reason, I think you should. And I think you'd be great at it because she'd never done that type of thing. And, you know, so that, that, that was a purpose, a new purpose for her in her career. It ended up being a, a great decision. Um, there's been times, you know, where I was like, hey, I don't know if I want to do news right now. I mean, I love covering news. I love seeing history, but it's become so political. And that's not me. And, you know, and Tamara was like, you know what? I think, I think we can do this. You, you can, you can, we, you can walk away. We're going to be fine. So I, I think a lot of it is just communication and being able to support one another. Um, and knowing that, hey, those paths change sometimes. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. the path may be this way, and then guess what? You get to there and you're like, oh, whoa, no, it's turned this way. And it's okay to adapt. I see us as each other's purpose partner. Mm -hmm. And I think the PP. <laughs> I think that when you are thinking of getting married, yes, you can date so and so. I always say too, like, you can fall in love, or maybe just because I love love. Like, I have fallen in love with people before and way back in my past that I am grateful. I say thank you that it didn't work out because looking back, they were not my purpose partner. Adam and I, we support each other in our own purpose. Mm -hmm. But we also have one main purpose, and that is... Well, we all, we, we both love God. So we pray about everything. We have faith. So in those moments where I may have to step back a little bit, we pray about the situation and we support and have faith. Because in the beginning, Adam was very much focused on his, his journal, journalism career. I had Aiden. Adam was traveling a lot. I couldn't go out on as many auditions as I wanted. Mm -hmm. But in that moment, I had faith that we were exactly where we were supposed to be, and I supported him. Cut two years later, Adam did the exact same thing, 
for me when I did the reel. Mm -hmm. There was somebody else you, you loved before. Oh my gosh, Adam. There's a famous song that comes out called, from Garth Brooks called, Sometimes I Thank God for Unanswered Prayers. I love that question. I would say Adam's confidence. That is one of the main traits that attracted me to Adam. I dealt with a lot of insecure men, maybe because, I don't know, I mean, I didn't realize my career had made some men very intimidated. Really? Yeah, I thought it was some, I thought, well, there could have been some things wrong with me too. Um, no. But uh, there were a lot of men who were intimidated. They were intimidated mm. by my success. And yes, I had success at a very young age. That is rare. But what I loved about Adam, Adam was like, yo, okay. that's dope. I love that she's yeah. successful. Um, so he was very confident. He was very confident in how he approached me. So I would love for my children, both of my children, to have that. I think they do. I just want them to keep it. I would say there are two things. Two? I get two? He is filling that cup. <laughs> her spirit. Aww. And her singing voice. Well, thank you. I know Araya has it. Araya has... Two for two. Uh, Aiden has a spirit. He does, have, does a spirit. have a spirit. You know, we get a lot of questions about this, and maybe it's something we do later on in a full episode, just to just talk about things. Because you listen, talking is the best best medicine. I think it's what next year or the next couple of years, the majority of kids born in this country are going to be mixed. Yeah. So it shows that you know a lot of those those barriers are being broken down, and um, you know it's it, for me for someone. I grew up in the Bay Area, and candidly, the Bay Area, I never thought anything of it. Honestly, I, I didn't. Uh, and obviously, I'm a white guy. I understand. No, it's hard for you to believe that. You're white. I know. Um, but <laughs> I, I never thought much about it, honestly, because, I mean, in high school, I remember I had friends who had girlfriends who were Filipino and or whatever. It, it was never, for some reason, call us naive, but in the Bay Area, when I grew up in the 80s and 90s, we didn't think about that. Like We didn't think about, oh, his girlfriend's black, or his girlfriend's Asian, or his girlfriend's you know, uh, Indian or whatever it happened to be, we thought, oh, his girlfriend's nice or she's pretty or hey, mm -hmm. she, you gotta, she's a pretty girl, man. What's, why is she with him? I mean, it was more on that. We never thought about the racial part of it. So I know other parts of the country weren't like that. That's just the way I, I grew up. Yeah. And, and you already had the experience, so. And I also wanna say, just stay out there. It's okay to have your preference. If, totally. if you like a particular type, okay, That's cool. But don't be afraid to be open. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I I think maybe because I was raised in, you know, I'm biracial. I was raised in an interracial, interracial household, interracial marriage. Um, it was always accepted. So kind of like how you, mm -hmm. you know, like if you saw somebody with someone of a different race, it wasn't like a, <gasps> right. Full stop. Wait, she's with a what? It, 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 yeah. Or he's with a. He's with a. I don't understand how that works. So I guess that's the blessing of yeah. how you know we've been raised. So we don't really think about it that way. It's when people comment mm -hmm. sometimes on our relationship. They're like, oh wait, yeah, I guess this is the thing. Okay. But yeah, I mean the frustrating part for for me is I never thought about it. I mean, even now I don't think about it. Like I don't think, oh, I'm married to a black woman or a mixed woman. I don't. I don't think about that. I, I, I'm married to a beautiful woman who I love. I don't think about anything other than that. One of the coolest things I liked, I got to do with you is when we got to go see the Loving premiere. Uh, yeah. Um, about the mixed couple in North Carolina, I think it was, and back in the 50s when they were the ones that helped change the law to allow yeah. mixed couples to That's get married. That's crazy to even think that back it was in the day, such a cool movie. it was against the law I know, like, to marry someone of a different race. I mean, it should be against the law to marry an actress, but nothing else. <laughs> If you're married to an actress, you know what I mean. Oh my gosh, this is the second time. Third time, Adam, you're sleeping on the couch. <laughs>
Do you know my name is Luca? I live on the second floor. I live upstairs from you. I don't think I ever seen you before. And I see your true colors shine. Okay, you know what? Stop. So you know what? This is one of the things that I absolutely love about Adam and I. Live talk about this on the real too. We we connect with our love for 80s music. And 80s movies. And music in general. We yeah, like, we like yeah, jazz. Yeah, yeah. 